Deck Pass Live, presented by Xfinity, is coming to you from Greensboro, North Carolina, the site of the Tier Pro Swim Series. Last night is wrapping up here at the beautiful Greensboro Aquatic Center. I'm Jeff Cummings. And I'm Caitlin Zandano. And we had some phenomenal races to wrap up tonight. A lot of Olympic stars, a lot yes. of Olympic hopefuls, yes. a lot of international stars. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the big names that, you know, it's the big names is in swimming right now, Katie Ledecky, just obliterated the field as she <laughs> usually does in the 800 freestyle. But I don't think that was really the big story. It was the big story that her time yes. was so fast <laughs> for this time of year. She always blows my mind. The times that she puts up, I mean, she could be competitive in the men's heat of this yes, race. Yes, yes. I, I think we, she actually got this. fifth in the men's race. <laughs> we definitely need to take a look at this race. Just as being a distance swimmer myself, I'm just always so impressed with her. She's always so composed. And she does. She makes it easy. She looks it, makes it look flawless. I, I, I'm so glad that I'm not in the same generation as Katie Lidecki. Yeah, I mean, it just looks like she's just... She can go another 800 here, and she's coasting in the wall. Nobody else is in the picture. That's typical. 814 for Katie Ledecky. <laughs> I think she was, her time was just a few hundreds faster than the silver medal winning time at World Championships, which was behind her gold medal performance, which, as we know, was riddled with a little illness, and we know she can go faster. I think she has to be very, very motivated by but that. Definitely. You have to be encouraged. You have to be pumped up. Like you said, kind of an interesting season to be swimming so fast. Here we are at that uh, beginning of November, yeah. right? But obviously, the confidence is there and the technique is always there and just puts on a show for this great Kara that's here tonight her, her mom's up in the stands and yeah. for me it's so impressive because she doesn't really have anybody pushing her okay let's yes. be honest she's out there racing against herself and that's hard to do yeah and Katie does is. that so well yeah and we said 814 which is absolutely amazing any woman in the world would love to be able to go 814 the beginning of November <laughs> Uh, just for kind of a little bit of reference, you won the bronze medal in the 800 freestyle at the Olympics. What was your time? Don't throw me under the bus like that. No, I'm not throwing you under the bus. We just I kind went, of put this in. I got bronze in 2000 with an 824. So Which Katie was fast then. It's just ama amazing that 19 I years know, later, it's I gotten know. so much faster. I think that's what the comment on the right. sport is, is that people like Katie have really just taken this so far ahead. Definitely. And, every and you know, it took a few years, but everybody else is following. <laughs> that's exactly why I said I'm glad I'm not swimming in this generation with Katie Ledecky. <laughs> yeah. So we, we have, as I said, more than just Katie Ledecky. We got a lot of international stars. We have yes. two world champions from Canada yes. here. Um, Kylie Moss, show. the former world record holder in the 100 backstroke. And then that surprise 100 fly world champion Maggie McNeil yes. just put on a show for the crowd here. I think it was really great to see them. Mm -hmm. Maggie McNeil swims at the University of Michigan. And I think, you know, um, Coach Mike Bottom has got to be really happy about her prospects for the Olympics coming up in Tokyo. No, most definitely. Like you said, in general, it was just a really impressive night. There's a lot of races. Again, we saw a lot of athletes that swim not one, but two races, some of them even throwing down three. So again, an endurance meet, getting back into the groove, getting some long course racing going, and then next month, the U.S. Open in Atlanta. Yeah, and obviously one of the bigger stars on the men's side, Ryan Lochte. We're all looking to see if he can make his fifth Olympic team. He got pretty good swim in that 200 I am I, I'm really impressed 2 double O. but I'm more impressed with Carson Foster right now my goodness yeah Carson, <laughs> we'll get to that later yeah but wow. Carson Foster <laughs> is amazing we'll talk more about him um, I also want to mention this is kind of an incentive for all the pro athletes who get to come here is that after all the pro swim series meets are over there's a ten thousand dollar bonus for the athlete who puts up the top swim based on the FINA power points nice. and I think you know some <laughs> of the swims here were pretty good I think Kate Ledecky's probably is the top ranked swim of of the meet so Definitely. far but as we get along and swimmers get faster i think they're going to be looking at that because you know yeah you don't want to kind of shave and taper no. for a pro swim series meet and kind of throw away your chances at the olympic trials and the olympics <laughs> but that ten thousand dollars is a nice carrot to put in front, I think, no, of everybody. Most definitely, it's so amazing for a sport. It's something that our athletes need, something that they need. We need to be able to provide these financial opportunities because this is what they do. This is their training. They yeah. don't have time to have a job, and if you know they're going out and doing swim clinics and um, you know putting on different events like that, that's, that's taxing. That's draining. It takes a lot from their training. So if they can come to a meet which I already need to do, and yeah. be able to pick up these amazing paychecks is all the incentive, and it's what we need for our sport. Right. And somebody who's kind of new to all that, earning money as a swimmer, mm -hmm. is our first guest today. He is one of the World University Games team members and a breakout star these past 18 months in the 100 Butterfly. He is. He was fourth in the 100 Fly at the World University Games this past summer, and he got on that World University Games team based on a fourth place finish at the 2018 Nationals, and then ended up 
doing very well this past summer at the 2019 Nationals, and here he is, Jack Saunderson. Good to have you here. Hi, thanks for having me. So, I, I just want to know, what does it feel like now to be a professional swimmer? <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Uh, this past couple uh, months have been great. Uh, I'm training at Towson still, and I, I love it there. Um, it's just a great opportunity for me. I didn't, never saw myself being in this position. Yeah, I, and I want to talk about that in a little bit, but uh, let's talk about, we were talking about that $10,000 bonus, but there's also bonus, there's also money for getting top three in your races. You picked up some nice. cash Yeah, I tonight. did. I, I was happy with that. I was happy with that swim. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about dinner all that. Dinner on Jack tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dinner yeah. on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's really always very good. Um, so you were just talking about you never thought you'd be a professional swimmer. I think there was a point, if I'm not mistaken, that you thought you wouldn't even swim in college. Yeah, coming out of high school, I was just an average, uh, you know, recruit and college swimming or whatever. Um, but at, yeah, Towson was the only one who reached out to me and like gave me an opportunity to swim in college. And uh, I, I just took off from there and then here I am now. And what do you think that game changer has been in your swimming career since high school and then where you are now, obviously? Oh yeah, yeah definitely with the, the whole team atmosphere, uh, just the friends I've made, the coaches that trained me. Uh, I just couldn't have asked for a better environment to train at for this uh, until this point. I mean, obviously you're in a program where you have teammates, but you were the only member to go to NC2As from your school, correct? Yes. That has to be a little bit challenging, I would assume. It was challenging, <laughs> yeah. But I know that all my friends back home are tuning in, and they're giving me so much support throughout, and uh, the coaches that come give me so much support and gain my, boost my confidence. Definitely. Are you, I hope you're not going to be yeah. the only Towson swimmer going to Olympic trials. <laughs> hope there's some more to, to kind yeah, of Yeah, we have a couple. Well, that's, that's really good. 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 That's really good, because Olympic trials is stressful. To have some teammates there, you Yeah, we're training real hard, and I, I, I'm uh, super confident I'll have more good. than one Towson swimmer. That's great. Well, let's talk about this Hunter Fly tonight, because as you said, it was a really good swim. As you said, you earned some money, but obviously this is a benchmark for the rest of the season going forward. We're going to take a look at it. You were qualifying in lane number three, and you were next to um, young upstart Luca Orlando, and there you are. You know, you're going into this race, obviously not at your peak. Talk about this start here, first of all. Yeah, no, I thought I had a good start. Um, I did want to go out uh, building the first 50. I wanted to take it out and relax because I wanted to bring it back home um, real fast, try to uh, catch up with Lewis and uh, John Luca. And it, I mean, yeah, you look so smooth there. And it, it, does that come from also having trained a little bit for the 200 fly? Yeah, definitely the uh, front speed isn't quite there right now at this, <laughs> at this point of the season. Right. But um, but yeah, I was happy with the, the second half of the race. I think I came back on them. Yeah, you definitely look like you're more aggressive there. And, and look at that, you're right there at lane number three. And you know, you got uh, Martinez just to your right and then Luca two lanes over, you're third from the bottom. 15 meters left, this has got to hurt right here, I'm sure. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. Like, uh, like every, I bet everyone in that heat is hurting right now. But there you are, yes, you get your hand on your wall it's third. It's a great finish. Thank you. Really yeah. finish. Thank you. That is one of the hardest things of Butterfly, to get that finish just right. <laughs> yeah. And those guys are super talented, and I want to compete to the best up to them. Yeah, and so this is a long course meet. Have you been doing any long course training? Not too much, but me and my coach have been actually talking. Uh, we're, we're finding like two times a week at uh, Meadowbrook. Okay, uh, very to good. To find some uh, long course training there. Well, a lot of people out there probably don't know a lot about you, and you have really, as I said, had this breakout summer in 2018 to get yourself on the World Universe Games team. Well, thank you. To get into that final and then um, to get on the World University Games team, you dropped like more than a second <laughs> off and your hundred fly time. I mean, amazing. that's that's unheard of at that level. Thank you so much. What yeah. do you think? enabled you to do that i have to dedicate all my like accomplishments just that like i said to my team where i train at towson i think it's a great program jake's from he's a great coach uh, i love him a lot right. and all, all the whole co coaching staff and the athletic department um i just have to thank them and then being in naples italy i mean i just got back from there myself did you have the most incredible time and what was it like for you representing our country yeah it was amazing university? yeah that was my first time outside the country too so so, cool. so that, that that was really cool and you know go, getting that experience being on the national team was right. just it was great it was a great opportunity it's it definitely was an honoring moment right i never realized how much of a uh how, mu how much of a, a great accomplishment it is to uh, to represent the USA. Right. You got that cap with your last name on yeah. it for the yeah, first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, goosebumps, uh -huh. right? Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. And then the team there was great. Yeah. I, I got to know a bunch of other people that I wasn't really able to yeah. right. when I was on the college season at Towson. So. 
So yeah, it was a very fun experience. Good. And if I'm not mistaken, the athlete dorm was on a cruise ship? Yes. Yeah, cru that was my first time on a cruise ship. Too. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> so did you have like bingo night and the big buffet or was it that all just... Yeah, was, it, yeah, yeah we, we all hanged out, we all had fun. Um, yeah, I got to know a lot of people and it was a fun time. That that's had great. to be, that's mm -hmm. obviously your first international trip is, I mean, nobody ever forgets that one. I it think was amazing. That it's going to be amazing. Hopefully you got a lot more yes. to come. That's going to yeah, be really cool. Just the beginning. I'm confident. I think we're Good. training real hard at Tassel. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So, as I said, as you said, you, you got some more um, swimmers going with you in Olympic trials and everything. These next seven months, how do you enable yourself to keep going when everybody else on your team right now is gearing up for the college yeah. season. You're, I would imagine you're the only pro swimmer there. How do you stay focused on what you're doing while everybody else is kind of on their own track? You know, to, to this point, I, I love the, the training regimen we have at Towson. And then the only the uh, thing I'm actually doing this year, I'm actually taking a couple training trips here and there Great. to other universities. Uh, I, can't, I went to NC State for a long weekend. Yeah. Uh, I loved it there. It was a great atmosphere. A big. It was an eye-opening experience for yeah. sure. sure. It's a lot different. Um, but but yeah, I'm looking forward to like reaching out to other universities and see if I can like yeah. come for like a week or so. Awesome. And, like, Where do you plan I, to go? I, I plan on like making a trip to Texas. I believe. Great. I think my awesome. coach is talking with the assistant. Perfect. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited for all That's those great. and like just having a like go switch of an environment yeah. and. Uh, I think it would be beneficial for me. Definitely. Yeah, I'm a little impartial. I'm, I'm going to say you go to Austin, you don't want to leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I heard it's a great city. At, yeah. Nash, at NCAA, so yes. it was a great, great time. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for yeah, joining us, Jack. And, yeah, thank you for congratulations having me. on your swims tonight. Being on the national team, we're looking Yay. forward to seeing thank how the so rest much. of the season goes. Thank you so much. Good luck to you. All right. So we had a lot of, as I said, just so much great racing here tonight, and. Jack was just part of that, and we wanted to just take a look at some of the other races we had tonight. I think one of the most stacked fields we had tonight was that men's 100 backstroke. We had Justin Ress, who was the gold medalist at the World University Games in 100 back, and Jacob Pebbly, who's more of a 200 backstroker, but really coming on. And you're going to see these two guys at the Olympic trials. And here's Justin, a little long on that finish, but really a good swim for him. And I think he's really trying to make a statement that he's going to make the Olympic team in 100 back. And then here's Simone Manuel, fourth from the, from the bottom in the 50 freestyle, the reigning world champion. Already at 15 meters was ahead of the field. Doesn't take a breath, which is rare for a lot of female swimmers, but she really had a great finish here too. I think she knows how to really accelerate in the 50 freestyle and get that timing right. And a really good swim for her too, 24.5, which is just about six tenths off her best time. And I think in November, I think that's just got to bode some really good things for what's to come for her in the next seven months. As I was saying yesterday, I was so thrilled to watch the 200 IMs tonight. I've always loved this race. 200 IM tonight, we had a pretty impressive field. Even Katie Ledecky was up in the 200 IM mix tonight, but it was Madison Cox from start. You know, she had a little push from Leah Hayes in the backstroke, but she took off after her breaststroke, and she could say that she really secured her lead with a really strong freestyle. And this was just about like 20 minutes after winning the 200 breaststroke. So she's had a fantastic meet. She's doing a lot of doubles. She's putting in a lot of hard work, and great things are coming to it. And as we made reference to earlier in the show, Carson Foster in the 200 IM. You know, you had Ryan Lochte in there. You had Jay Litherland, Adam Devine, and then you have 18-year-old Carson Foster, who just dominated really the whole race, Jeff. And <laughs> to me, I'm like, he's the real deal. You, you said that to me. He's like, yeah. this kid is legit. And yeah. he had mentioned in his post-race interview that he grew up idolizing Ryan, and here he is beating him and putting on a very close to his best time, very if I'm not close. mistaken. Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what he has in store and yeah. what his bright future is going to yeah. look like. He's the world junior champion in the tuner I am. And it must it has to be tough to come off that and the expectations he has, not just on himself, but right. everybody else. And Olympic trials in the tuner I am, it's, <laughs> it's going to be amazing. I know. Can Ryan make his fifth Olympic team? He's the Only world record done holder. Done Don't count him out. Two other times, Michael Phelps and Sarah Torres. Can Ryan Lochte add his name to that? So would, impressive yeah. regardless. It would be amazing history. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> well, as we said, a lot of great swims tonight. And we got something else that's coming up in just a couple of weeks so that's going to celebrate some of the great swims we had earlier this year. The golden goggles, yes. the Oscars of swimming. Everybody <laughs> dresses up in their finest. And it's really kind of amazing to see a lot of these swimmers. You look at them and say, when they're on the red carpet, you're like, I don't recognize Wait, you. And look, that? that's, that's Katie Ledecky <laughs> looking at her finest. And yeah, you, you look at someone like Nathan Adrian, yeah. well, that's just great. Yeah. That is amazing. <laughs> he, he always looks good. And Simone knows how to dress too. And 
And I, I'm just always amazed to see how well some of these athletes, I think they have some help. I think some of them have <laughs> a little so? help. I mean, look at that Lily King with the nice curls in her hair. And, I think they have a lot of fun dressing. Yeah, more than anything, you know, like you said, it's a celebration. We're recognizing the amazing feat that they had this summer before. Get to bring the athletes back together and and get them in a different environment. You know, they're always in their cap and goggles and at these meets and letting us recognize them and celebrate them and letting them, you know, do their hair and put some makeup on. And and it's for such a great cause. The proceeds going to the United States, uh, the Swimming Foundation. And then all the tickets are still available. You guys can get the tickets if you go on USAswimming.org. And this year, there's going to be a really cool... Yes, we can announce yes. this, who the entertainment's going to be. Me! <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, I think she wants to be the opening act for the real band that's going to be there. Lucas Graham is going to be there. So that's if so you're cool. going to be at Golden Goggles, you're in for a treat. If you are not, if you don't plan on being going to Goggles, you want to get your tickets because that would be exciting to yeah. see Lucas Graham. And if you can't join us, we'll have the coverage. I'm going to be on the red carpet with Colin Jones doing all the pre-show yeah. interviews, and you can catch the show. And um, the post uh, winners will be doing their awards as well. The they're getting their interviews. So it's just a great night. So you can support us and follow us along. I think it's going to be I cannot wait. Sunday, November 24th is the time to do it. I cannot wait to see who wins all these awards. <laughs> I, I think some of them, well, the only award that's that's not a nail biter is Male Athlete of the Year because <laughs> Caleb Dressel is the only nominee, kind of as he should be. But the others, I think, are up in the air. And I think that's, I think it's going to be fun to see, you know, who, who wins and kind of, you know, these are swimmers and they're going to be not used to standing up there and talking with a water in their hand. <laughs> Wearing heels. Yeah, and you, you've won a, a few Golden Goggle Awards, and, and uh, you know, what was it like for you to be up on stage and actually have to talk? Yeah, you know, I've won three Golden Goggles. Luckily, I've been on some really great relays, so that was two out of the three awards. <laughs> and then I, in 2004, actually, the first year of the Golden Goggles, I won the Perseverance Award, um, coming back from a pretty hard four years between 2000 and 2004. And it's an honor. It really is, and it's very humbling. And, and for me to win two more with the relay team, it's just li- like winning – a medal at the actual meet to stand up there with your teammates. It's really yeah, special. Yeah, it is really fun. All right, so we're going to have our next guest here on the show. He is the head, the head of the um, Kick Set podcast that USA Swimming does. And Dan McCarthy, come on in. It's great to have you here with us. How you doing? It's yeah. great to have How you. you so uh, before we talk about this podcast, we, we want to kind of give people an idea of what you really do with USA Swimming. You're the, <laughs> what you really what do, you really do you're, you're a major job. You're the high-performance consultant. Yes. Yeah, so what is, what does that what mean? What does that mean? <laughs> well, I'm part of the high-performance staff that I've been with for years now. Matt Barbini, Russell Mark, mm-hmm. and Katie Arnold. We've worked together for a number of years now, mm-hmm. and... We've supported our athletes, I would say, behind the scene. Yes. Tech support, race stats, blood chemistry, wow. all the stuff that goes on uh, that nobody ever sees. <laughs> and without those guys, you know, and the work that we've been able to put together the last couple of years, um, you know, things would be a little bit different. Right, nobody sees it, but it's so vital. It is. It's so crucial. And we, we talked about earlier how, for example, Katie Ledecky is taking the 800 freestyle and the times that she's doing is just so impressive. And when you compare it, the sport is advancing because of, I believe, a lot behind the scenes with what you guys are doing. The technology and the science behind everything is just truly breaking barriers. Yeah, I mean, and it's, we're super fortunate to be working in the United States with the resources we have, the athletes we have, and the coaches that we have, we have so much support um, that it makes our job easier. So do you look more at the racing aspect of swimming or the training? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we actually, um, we have all of that going on now. We have the racing aspect of it. We're testing them after their training. Um, we're looking at the race stats. Keenan Robinson is yes. watching how they swim. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sorry, how they sleep. Yeah. Oh, wow. So. We are trying to make sure that no stone goes unturned Mm -hmm. to give the athletes and their coaches every little piece of information Mm -hmm. they might need to swim faster. Now, were you a swimmer? I did. I I swam um, up through high school, and then I started coaching, and I coached for 20 years before I came to USA Swimming. Amazing. Very Very nice. So, obviously, when you were a swimmer, and probably even when you started as a coach, a lot of these resources weren't available to Mm -hmm. you. No, they were not. Um, we had to order uh, heart rate monitors from Australia, <laughs> and they picked up the electrical signal from the telephone poles overhead, and uh, lactate meters were, they looked like medieval devices. So, yeah. It, yeah, the things are a lot different now. <laughs> yeah, it makes it so much easier. Like, in five seconds, you know how an athlete feels. <laughs> yeah. Yes. As opposed to days, you have to get the results back. Yeah, it's, it's really kind of interesting um, how you kind of 
segued from that into the Kickset podcast. How did you get involved with that? Well, I, I've i loved podcasts probably a lot because of USA Swimming because the amount of travel we have to do. Mm. You're just looking for something to listen right. to when you're traveling or you're running in Gwangju, South Korea, you know, <laughs> or you're trying to occupy some time. And the podcast format maybe started maybe 15, 16 years ago. And there's some, you know, great, like Bill Simmons and Dan Carlin and people that put these podcasts out there and it, I thought it was perfect. You know, it was the combination of like, oh, this is educational, but it's kind of like music because I'm listening to yeah. it. And you, then the niche category started coming up and that just was something that really I found interesting. And one of the benefits of working at USA Swimming is that if you think something's interesting, you can prove it's viable and you can support it, they'll let you run with it. That's amazing. So it was kind of the idea of saying, this is something I'd really like to do. And they said, okay, go ahead and do it and make sure that it's it's quality because right. we are USA Swimming. Of course. And two years into it now, um, I think we've got a nice little foothold and uh, I think we're ready to put a little few more resources behind it and, and promote it a little bit more and see if we can't reach more of our, of our audience. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Who's been your most interesting interview so far for your podcast? Um, well, this is, I'm not going to say it's a cop out, but one of the things I like to say is that we have something for everybody. Sure. Okay. Of course. Um, one of our most popular athlete podcasts was, uh, we did one with Connor Yeager and Maya Dorado. Yeah. And they did a wonderful job of explaining how hard it was to get to Rio in 2016. Not how amazing it was to win, but that journey just from 2012 to 2016. Okay. So for the athletes and the coaches, that was great for them to it's listen relatable. to. relatable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Russell, I had Russell on a little bit ago, and we talked about his background. Everybody yes. knows what Russell does, but they don't know, you know, the interesting life that he had growing up in Queens, New York, and you know, how different his life was compared to mine, but we ended up in the same place. That being Russell Mark. Yeah, Russell Mark. <laughs> yeah. Um, Coach Troy was great, oh, you know, yeah. just because you get a chance to, that's the nice thing about the podcast format. It's 40 minutes, 50 mm -hmm. minutes, and you don't have to drill it down into, you know, let's get a 30 second spot here. Right. You know, if somebody wants to talk about the dog they had when they were a kid and how that changed their life, <laughs> yeah. we'll go five yeah. minutes on that. Yeah. And I will say, just a little tease, we have a great podcast coming up this month with Bruce Gemmel. Oh, great. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, we're getting, very interesting. Yeah, we recorded it here, got to talk a little bit about distance training, mm -hmm. and um, I guess one of the things that's interesting is that the podcast is kind of timeless. Mm -hmm. So whenever I sat down with Arthur Alberio at... Uh, at World Champion Trials. Yeah. He had an opportunity to talk about how his athletes were doing right then, but also talk about how he built Louisville up. So you get the emotion of how your athletes are swimming, right. plus, you know, how how you got to where you are. And these are great guests that you've had. Yes. yes. Who's the who's kind of the, the white whale? Who's the one that's out there that you're like, I, I want to get that person on this podcast? Well, whenever um, he was swimming, um, Michael Phelps and I had a great relationship because um, he was a Baltimore Ravens fan and I was a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Oh boy. And uh, uh, it was almost like we got to that point of a mutual respect because both those teams just, just beat the heck out of each other yeah. every time they got on television. And our relationship started talking football. Yep. And you know, eventually at some point in time, I started going to Meadowbrook and then Arizona State and talking about swimming. Um, and I would love to have Mike on to talk about competition. Yeah. You know? And, and rivalries. He knows it's the best. Yeah. yeah, and rivalries and, you know, because everything, like there's, swimming is not just what goes on in the pools. Right. Yeah, you know, there's so is. many right. interesting stories around it. Most right. Definitely. And and being a podcast host myself, I know you could go on for hours and hours with a guest. I mean, it is it is so hard, but it, it is so fun, like you said, because you do have that ability to just kind of just let the subject just talk. Right about well, pretty much whatever they want and yeah. all you're doing is just making sure they don't go too far off the rails yeah and, and if they do great yeah <laughs> you that's know? that's awesome too because sometimes you get some gems yeah out of that. I, there's one up with uh chris webb and we definitely went off the rails and we started talking about strength and conditioning and um how you know parenting and all kinds of crazy stuff on there and may not have been the most popular podcast as far as listens, but for people that really wanted to take a deep dive into a subject a little off the beaten path, they enjoyed it. Yeah, I think that's really cool. Um, yeah, you talked about you were from, from Pittsburgh. Yes, sir. Pennsylvania, the state of Pennsylvania has had some amazing swimmers come up <laughs> and amazing coaches. I mean, Greg Meehan's from Pennsylvania. We've had some amazing breaststroke, Tracy Kowal, Brendan Hansen. Yes. 
I mean, just some amazing people from Pennsylvania. What what has made Pennsylvania such a great swimming state? Um, well, first of all, it's a great sports state. Sports are incredibly important to the state, and it starts at like the local high school level. Um, I know we just had our local football championships going on right now in Western Pennsylvania, and there's over 63 high schools just around the city of Pittsburgh wow. that compete to get into, I think, 35 high school playoff spots and drill that down into all the way from 1A to 6A. We don't have the population of a Texas, a Florida, or a California, but it's incredibly competitive um, to get into those sports. And I think that that started in the 60s and the 70s, and it's kind of bled over to the rest of the sports. So now you have, you know, cross country running is big. Lacrosse is big. Every single sport is big, and in order to be the best in the state of Pennsylvania, you're going to have to run up against somebody that's the best somewhere along the line. Absolutely amazing. Well, Dan, thank you so yeah, much for joining you. us. Oh, my pleasure. We Tune love the podcast. It. It's really great. Yeah. And if you guys Thanks. have not listened to us, the Kickset Podcast, you can find it on iTunes and SoundCloud, and also go to usaswimming.org. Lots of great episodes. You Basically, if you have a long commute, you'll get through it in a, probably a, in <laughs> pretty quick. I think we should have a crossover podcast. I think so. That would be great. I All would right. love that. Done and done. Look <laughs> at right. that, you guys. Pretty thank much you for your time. Thank, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Uh, so, Caitlin, we're, we're wrapping up here, but we're going to be back on the East Coast very soon. Back on the road. I'll see you in Atlanta. U.S. Yeah. Open. Yes. Hope you guys can join us then. And then, I'm so excited. We've already mentioned it. Colin Jones and I, you can find us at the Golden Goggles on the red carpet, so tune in for that and the whole show. And as always, thank you for tuning in. And, and I would just like to say happy Veterans Day, a sincere yes. amount of gratitude and respect. And, Thank you so much for serving our country, and I hope everybody has a fabulous um, Veterans Weekend. Yes, and have a wonderful Thanksgiving out there, everybody. We will see you back here at the U.S. Open.